Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Transforming Glory. It's your girl, Chantel, and we are back with another message for you. Oh, this one is going to bless you. We're going to be talking about the matters of our heart, how we like to hide things in our heart. <laughs> And I am just as guilty as the next. But this message is going to really bless you. But first, let me do some preliminaries. I want to thank you all for joining with me and rocking with me since 2016. We have really been out here pressing in and moving in the things of God. I know that if you have been on our channel, a lot of the things that we do, we do them faceless. And I know people are like, well, why don't you show your face? Well, because when we're doing our prayers, I don't necessarily want you to be concerned about what I have on, what color my, my top is, what how my hair looks or anything like that. I want you to be focused in on the prayer points and the scriptures. And then what you're to do is to take those prayer points and scriptures and you pray them in your devotional all throughout the week. If you already have our A Blaze of Faith uh, Breakthrough Bible Study a journal, you will see, uh, well, really it's a manual, but you will see that we have a dedicated that each day of the week, you are praying about a certain um, group of people. So how, how, what does that look like? So on Sundays, you would be praying for the church globally. So whatever prayer points that we are praying on that particular week, that's what you're praying for the church globally. So if we're praying for a uh, revelation, for the eyes of the people to be open, to receive the fullness of God, you're going to pray that for the church globally. On Mondays, you're going to pray those same prayer points, those same scriptures for your own personal life, for your family. On Tuesdays, you then take that and you broaden it out to the community. Listen, we can shift our communities by prayer. You're not changing the prayer points and you're not changing the scripture. And then on Wednesdays, you cover your children and the school and the school district and the school system. Then we're covering, then each day is dedicated to something else. But what's happening, because you're praying the same scriptures and the same prayer points, they are being etched, written in your heart. And now they become part of you and you strengthen yourself. God showed me that as we're praying, it was like the blade of the knife was getting sharper and sharper. That's why we have you focused in and targeting in on the same scriptures and the same prayer points for seven full days. Now, if you miss a day, we're not legalistic. If you miss a day, you just keep on going, but you are building yourself in prayer. A lot of times we don't realize that our prayer altar, the fire is about this big. It's not fervent hot. It's kind of lukewarm. And God is wanting us to turn up the fire. Why? Because when his fire is in us, it burns out all the impurities. As we pray, we'll begin to see shifts in our lives. All right? And these situations that we're dealing with, my God, they will be so small and minuscule because we know who our God is and how mighty he is, and that this problem is nothing for him, all right? So I want to thank you all for rocking with me all these years. Um, if you want to find us on Facebook, uh, the information is going to be in the description, but it's Kingdom Fire Restoration Ministries. That's the community where we can talk a little bit more, you know, place your prayer points, I mean, uh, your prayer requests out there. And we just well, want you to encourage each other as we are growing in the Lord. Um. I also want you to check out our website. We have so many tools for you to help grow you as you are diving deeper into the things of God. So today we are going to be um, praying, well, not praying, but ministering to you um, about the matters of the heart. And before I go into that, um, if you have not subscribed to our channel, we would ask that you would subscribe. And let me tell you why. We're doing, we have so many things that we are 
uh, beginning to start and we'll be recording and having out here for you all to use, uh, to grow, to nourish yourselves. Um, but if you're not a part of our ministry, you have no idea whenever we have uploaded new things. Um, some things will be here on YouTube and some things are going to be courses and books and materials and manuals that you have to be a part of our community in order to know whenever we've done that. So I, um, you'll see our, y'all, you know, I'm not real good at all this stuff. Um, check out my website. <laughs> Check out my website and make sure that you leave me your email so that you can be notified whenever we have uploaded new works. Um, we were supposed to have finished the book of Kings, uh, but we haven't finished the book of Kings yet. We've already finished uh, the books of Esther and John, and we're working on First Kings and the Song of Solomon. And then we're going to go into Second Kings, and then we're going to keep moving. We have so many wonderful projects coming out, but you're here to hear the message. So what I want you to do is I want you to join me in prayer as I get ready to talk about the matters of our heart. Oh God, help us today. Father, we thank you for meeting with us today. As we come to the hill of the Lord, just as you revealed yourself to Moses, as he came to the hill for instructions, we come to hear from you. We come to hear from you. Just as you transformed Moses and you allowed your glory to shine through, as you allowed your voice to be expressed through him, so we come with an expectation of an encounter with you, you, the true, the living God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, give us a teachable spirit. My God, hallelujah. Give us a teachable spirit. Oh, transform our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are interceding for us daily. Hallelujah. You make intercession for us and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you for transforming our hearts as we listen to these scriptures. Hallelujah. Embed them in our hearts. Cause us not to regurgitate it out. Cause us not to fight with you. Cause us to be still and allow you to do what you want to do in our lives. All right. So you may see me looking down because I have the message already prepared. Because if I don't, I know I'll go down these rabbit holes and I want to stay focused. So if you see me looking down, it's not that I am not paying attention to you all, but I'm keeping track with the word that God gave me and not adding to it nor taking away from it. All right, you ready? Here we go. I am excited about this topic. Many times we go about doing the works of ministry, but we leave out the most important aspect, which is sonship. That means we are to allow our heart to be transformed by the power of the word of God. Before God does anything with us, he has to deal with the matters of the of our heart or the posture of our heart. Most of the time, we don't agree with what God is showing us about ourselves. We are blinded by our own light, which we must always remember. The light that is emanating from us is a lesser light. <laughs> we don't feel comfortable looking red reflectively at our own hearts. It's really hard to look inwardly and really scrutinize your reactions, your thoughts, your motives, your agenda, your problem. You're the reason why there's a problem. <laughs> we, we can see why everybody else is the problem, but we don't, we have a hard time looking at us ourselves inwardly. The Holy Spirit will nudge us about a matter. And what do we do? We run in another direction. We pretend like we don't understand. 
I'm reminded in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 23. And God was telling the people <laughs> how they ignore him, how we ignore him. Let me, let me read it to you. It says, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 23. But they obeyed not. This word obey in the Hebrew means they didn't hear intelligently. They didn't pay attention to or carefully consider. Neither did they incline their ear to the instructions of God. And guess what? This displeased God. But made their necks stiff. This is where we get that saying that we say a lot. Stiff necked. <laughs> so when you call somebody, oh, stick neck child, you are actually speaking Bible to them. <laughs> but your neck becomes stiff so that you might not hear nor receive or even accept what God is saying. God wants you to mingle his instructions into your life. It also means we are married. We are married to the word of God. We are married to God. We are the bride of Christ. So they didn't, um, they, they refused to receive the instructions and use restraint, heed to the warnings or the instructions and make the necessary corrections. How many times has God sent instructions to you and you have ignored them. You didn't put on the restraints. You didn't make the necessary corrections. So after Holy Spirit nudges us, we push that thought way back, way, 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 way back into the corner of our mind. Then we shut the door. We erect a gate and then we put a lock on it. And we click, clank, 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 clank. We shut it all up. All right. We make sure that lock is on there real tight. And then we put the key in our pocket. And then we go, wait a minute. That's not enough. I don't want nobody to be able to get to that thing. So now I'm going to put some semen around it. Only to forget that God can see past the semen. God can open the gate without your key. And God can take the hinges off the door. So today, God is opening the door, dismantling the gate, and annihilating the cement so he can deal with the matters of our heart. We are sitting at the master's table, and he's pouring out of his spirit upon us to refresh us again, just like we have to refresh our natural body by sleeping daily, by eating daily, we're refreshing, reviving the body. So our spirit needs to be revived again, afresh daily. All right. Use your imagination as I paint this picture. You're in a store and you see a beautiful vase. We don't call it a vase because if it's a vase, it's just $2.99. But this is a beautiful vase. And we're thinking, oh, I could see that sitting in my house. I can see the shelf that I want to put it on. And then you can see the flowers all in your imagination. And you're like, okay, I'm going to buy this vase. So you go buy the vase. And you stop by the floral shop and pick up some flowers and you go home and you prune the flowers and you put the water in the vase and you put the flowers in the vase. Just in case I have some men listening, you're not in the shop looking at some vase. You are at Home Depot, Lowe's, somebody, and you saw that jigsaw and it's on sale and you are like, I'm getting that jigsaw and I am going to go and make myself a man cave, man den, man something in my backyard, him shed, and I'm going to use this jigsaw. So you go pick up some lumber and you got your nails and you head home and you plug in that jigsaw. You got your lumber all set up. You turn the jigsaw on and it don't say nothing. The jigsaw doesn't work. The bars. Hallelujah. The vase 
Jesus, have mercy on us. The vase, the water is spilling out. And you're wondering, wait a minute, what is going on? The jigsaw, you had no idea from your natural eye, you couldn't tell that there was a problem. You didn't know that there was a crack in the vase and the water spilled out all over the place. This is what happens when we have issues in our heart. Our heart has cracks in it. And the spirit of the living God cannot be housed in a vessel with cracks because it seeps out. So this is why God wants us to look at the matters of our heart. Oh God. I want you to follow me over to Jeremiah chapter 18. And I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible. God told Jeremiah, put your name right there. God told you up on your feet, go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll teach you what I have to say. Wait, so you mean to tell me that God has something to say but he's not going to say it at that very moment. I have to first follow the instructions of getting up and going. How many things has God said to you? Go do this. And you haven't gone to do it. And you're wondering why, <clears throat> excuse me. You're wondering why you have not received any other instructions because the first instruction said up on your feet and go. So whatever it is that God has told you to do, you need to start doing it right now. Not tomorrow, right now. So it says, up on your feet, go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. So I went to the potter's house and sure enough, the potter was there working away at his will. Whatever the pot the potter was working on, turned out badly as sometimes happens when you're working with clay and the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot lord make us again another verse five can't i do just as the potter does people of israel can't i do just as the potter does put your name there God's decree, watch this potter in the same way the potter works with his clay, I work on you, children of God. So at this time, Jeremiah the prophet had been speaking to Israel about their heart problem. And if you really take a look at it, the whole book of Jeremiah is about a heart problem. <laughs> My God, the entire book of Jeremiah reveals that we have the capacity to harden our heart to the things of God. Hmm. You know, prophets are spokesmen for God. They tell what God has to say, not what they want to say, not what you want to hear, but what God has to say. God has been using Jeremiah to warn Israel that pride was in their lives. Jeremiah is consistently pleading with the people. He's telling the people how God is furious with them for the way that they are responding to him, not to him, Jeremiah, but to him, God. Hmm. It seems like Jeremiah only came with a harsh word. But God had been speaking to the people for years about their heart condition. So a lot of times in our lives, we think, oh, God is just being harsh. Ah, da, 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 da. No, he's been speaking to you about these matters for years. He sent your son, your, your young son, who's just started to talk and the son corrects you and you get mad. You won't listen. 
He sends your wife or your husband. He sends your friend and you get mad with the friend, but God has been reaching out, trying to talk to you and you have become dull in your hearing. You won't even apply. You won't even let his love come in and go, I see it. And we're not moving any further until I deal with that issue. So for years, you've been blaming all the outside circumstances, your boss, your wife, your husband, your kids, if only they would. But God is saying, it's not them. I'm dealing with you. And until we deal with this issue, you are going to consistently be on the outside looking in. All right. Their hearts had become hardened, much like in the times that we live in today. So, so many times when we read that Bible, we go, I'm not like the children of Israel. Oh, oh you, are you not? <laughs> are you not? We are. We have a tendency to harden our hearts. All right. So we are the clay that God wants to fashion into the vessel fit for his use to bring the kingdom of God into the earth to display the glory of God to all mankind. The cracks in our hearts make our vessel unusable. Life's challenges hit us. Our hearts become hardened. We begin to get stiff in our neck, not wanting to bow down in prayer and allow God to heal the damaged areas of our heart. This is where we are walking with God, but we despise God at the same time. With our lips, we praise God, but our hearts are far from him. And let me give you scripture for that, lest you think I'm making it up. Matthew chapter 15, verse eight. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. We're worshiping God in church honoring God with our lips, but their heart, thoughts, mind, feeling is far from me. Let me read it to you from the message Bible because it gets all up in your face. I love the message Bible. It is so in your face that you're like, <sighs> sometimes when I read, read, the best, read the message Bible, I'm like, mm -hmm. that's just, I can't say that I don't understand because it's so plain. <laughs> So listen to how it says it in the Message Bible. These people make a big show of saying the right thing. But their heart isn't in it. They act like they're worshiping me, but they don't mean it. They just use me as a cover for teaching whatever suits their fancy. Y'all, I told you the message Bible will tear you up. So as I was reading this, when I was doing this study and I began to think of Judas, I said, what? We can learn a lesson from Judas. Listen to this. Judas walked with the living word. Judas heard the teachings from the throne of God from the very voice of God, from God himself, full of power, authority, might, strength, wisdom, love, compassion, and grace. Judas saw the miracles being performed right before his eyes. Judas was a part of the miracles. Judas was a part of the disciples who walked with God, Jesus. The issue was his heart. Love was constantly pouring out and reaching out to him, but he would not allow love to transform his heart. My God, how many times do we do that? We're right there in the service, but we won't allow love to transform our heart. Hmm. Many are like Judas. They started out well, but life choked out the word. It never got rooted in the heart where the transformation needs to take place. My God. Hmm. It's in our heart where the transformation needs to take place. The problem was 
that Judas only allowed the word to land on the surface level, on the flesh. My God, that's where the sun comes out, where the heat of life comes out and it scorches and kills the life of the word so that you, the recipient, can never come into the fullness of the desire of God for your life. This is the parable of the sower and the seed, which is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 through 30. So I have to ask you a question as I begin to wrap this up. What is the posture of your heart? Has it become hardened? Is your life feeling like you're just going in circles? You know that there were some things that you were supposed to be accomplishing, but it just seems like you're always on the edge of everything that God has told you to do, but you can't seem to grab a hold of it. Is your fire still blazing on the altar of your heart? It is the fire of God that burns out impurities in our lives. Remember when Moses saw the bush? The fire had consumed the bush, but it was not destroyed. The fire comes not to destroy you. Everything around the bush was purified and holy. God said it was holy ground and he told Moses to take his sandals off of his feet because the ground was holy. When the fire comes in to purify you, you become that holy vessel that God uses to express himself through. My God, we want the fire of God in our heart. Is your prayer life on fire or has it become a little bit deplane? Little bit deplane. Don't worry. If get these matters of the heart right and you will begin to see your your prayer life flourish. I understand what it's like to have veered off track and then you come back around and you try to get everything back going. And it seems like the train just is like, it's like you're pulling a whole bunch of weight, but keep going. Don't you dare stop. Don't you stop pressing in because you're going to begin to feel that blaze of fire begin to push you. And you're going to feel the presence of God coming in and praying through you and strengthening you. So keep going. Don't stop. Today, our father is calling out to each of us. He wants each of us to surrender our hearts to him. No matter what it is you're dealing with, God can heal your heart. Listen, let me tell you something. Do you know that you can, you can be full of bitterness and that bitterness turns into anger and rage and everything that you do and you say comes out harsh, comes out like cutting people. But actually what's happening on the inside of you because there is bitterness, rage, anger, jealousy, covetedness in your heart, it is actually causing inflammation in your body. It actually destroys the cells in your body. This is why God wants to make sure that our hearts are pure. If you've said something, done something, reacted in a way that is not godly, listen, I, child, when I'm out there driving in this Houston traffic and I'm like, can't you drive? And then I'm like, oh God, forgive me. Listen, these little things and you're like, oh, that's so silly. Surely that not, listen, then you wonder why all that stuff begins to get embedded in your heart. People are walking around with sicknesses and diseases because they will not release the issues in their heart. It's a serious thing. He wants to do just as he said to the children of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. He wants to make us again another. And listen, he's not going to go create more clay. He's not going to go out there and create another you. He is going to put you in his hands and he is going to gently with love and compassion, 
make you again another. If you will allow him. Everything about God is very conditional. And I know that that's so hard for us to understand. God is very legalistic in a righteous way. What do I mean by that? Go look at the Bible. God says, if you do this, then I'll do that. But if you do this, then I'm going to do that. That's legalistic. God does not even come out of his own laws. There are things that God wants to do in your life, but because of this blockade, in, and not this heart here, I know I'm pointing to this heart, but this, it's our spirit, our mind, our intellect, our heart, where he resides in us. If we don't get that stuff cleaned out, God's not going to go any further. Although he sees great and wonderful things for your life. Before you came to this earth, he already knew what he wanted to do through you. But the issues of life have come in and you haven't allowed Holy Spirit to teach you how to, yes, life is going to hit us. But when life hits us, you got to take that thing and give it to God. I'm like, nope, that's not mine, God. That's yours. You take it. I can't handle that. That's too much. I can't. Clean me up and clean up my thoughts. Clean up my motives. Clean up my agendas. Come on. Every day, we got to line our lives up and make sure there's nothing nothing blocking our communication and the tenderness of our hearts. This life that we live in this evil and dark world, it's very easy to get a hardened heart. And that's why we want the fire of God on our lives to keep our lives pure, to keep our lives light and free. All right. Okay. So he's not going to make another you. He's going to use you in the body that you are in, and he's going to make you again another, all right? It doesn't matter how dark the issue may seem. It doesn't even matter how small the issue may seem or how large the issue is. One thing you have to understand, the enemy of your soul, the devil, and his demons and imps and principalities, they will use these situations and circumstances against you. <laughs> they want to stop you from becoming the king and the priest that you are once you accepted Christ. Listen, salvation was just the free easy part. But now there is work that you have to do. It is your responsibility. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not your mom's responsibility or your husband's responsibility or your father's responsibility or your wife's responsibility. You will have to stand before God and give an account for your life. It's your responsibility. The way you treat people, that's your responsibility to correct. The way you think about things, that's your responsibility to correct. The way you handle past trauma, the trauma that you experienced was real. Did you grow up in a bad house? Did you have a mean mother and father that didn't even support you in anything? Did you have a bad marriage where your spouse didn't support you? That's traumatic, but it's your responsibility to take those issues and bring all the hurt, frustration, rejection, resentment, whatever it is, bring it to God and let him bring it up out of you, burn it up out of you so that it doesn't stop you. It's your responsibility, not anyone else's. So whatever it is you're facing, it's your responsibility to come before God and to lay those issues out, okay? Or I know that seems harsh, but it's not. It's actually freeing. Because once you realize it's not your responsibility to house these things and to correct this and to correct that, God is going to take that trauma. He's going to remove it up out of you so that it doesn't stop you from moving forward. All right. And listen, that stuff is heavy. You need to get it up off of you. Don't you know that from the time that God ordained you to come to the earth, he ordained you with his benefits, but you gotta, you gotta know this word and you gotta begin to walk in those benefits. So Father, we thank you for your benefits of being a son of God. And I know some of you are out there saying, what about daughter? Well, let me tell you something. When God sees us, he doesn't see male or female. He doesn't see a Jew or Gentile. 
He doesn't see uh, uh, anything other than his son. He sees redeemed, unredeemed, period. He doesn't, he put us in a body. Some of us have a female body. Some of us have a male body. But what he sees is his son inside of us. That's it. So the outward casing, he's not concerned with. This is just how we walk in the earth. He wants you to be a son of his, sons of God, kings and priests in the land, the uh, ambassadors of the kingdom of God, all right? So right where you are today, I want you to speak to God for yourself. Some of you all, this might be the first time that you're like, wait a minute, I can speak to God? Yes, you can right where you are. You don't need a man or a woman to go in between you and God. It, he will hear your prayer. You can say it within yourself. That's your inner closet. You can say it within yourself or you can open your mouth and say, God, if you're real, can you hear me? Listen, when I first started walking with the Lord, I didn't know. And, and I'm a bishop's daughter, grand or not daughter, granddaughter. Um, I had to learn that God would actually hear me. Yeah, God wants to hear us. God will talk with us. God loves us, all right? I want you to speak to God for yourself. And I want you to begin to pour out. You know, there's a scripture in Psalm 62 where it says, you pour, is it in Psalm 62? I think it's Psalm 62 where you pour your heart out to God. I mean, you can just, blah, 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 blah. you know how they say do word dumps, word dump on God. I mean, get it all out. If it takes you two and three days, just like God and this too, blah, 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 just, I'm giving it all to you. I don't even want to just, for lack of a better word, regurgitate it out. Just get it all out. He, he's like, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I can handle it. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. Because what I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning you up. I'm freeing you. I'm softening you up. I'm causing you to become light so that you can move. All right. But here's the problem. We have been willing to be obedient to man. But the Bible says that if we are willing and obedient to him, that's when we'll see the good of the land come to us. That's when we'll see uh, uh, blessings overflowing that just, I mean, they overtake us. You gotta be willing and obedient to God to follow his instructions. His instructions sometimes seem hard, but they're really not. They really are not. So I want you to enter into your prayer closet and I want you to cry out to God. Confess those things that have been lingering. You've been carrying these things for years. Hmm. God wants to make you again another. But some of these things have got you so weighted down, you can't fly, you can't soar. You can't even get your feet off the ground because you're so heavy laden. That's why he said, come and cast your burdens on me and I will give you rest. My God, I beg you, I implore you to give it to God because here's the scary part. While we're on this live together while or listening to the replay, while you're listening to me, you're like, oh, I can feel it. I'm so energized. Yeah. I'm going to hook into her faith and whew, I'm going to get free. All right. That's wonderful. This is exactly what we want you to do. When I say we, I'm talking me, God, Holy Spirit. That's what, that's the whole re reason for this message. But you have to understand once this camera goes off, this fight that you're walking, it's between you and God. So you have to build up your faith. You have to stay in the word. You have to stay in prayer. And what does that look like when we say stay in prayer? That means all throughout the day, if something is hitting you or, or something happens on the job, you immediately, you know, yeah, you're at your desk working, but you're in prayer. God, now you saw what they did. And I, I really, I tried to hold my tongue, but my tongue couldn't be held this time. So I'm asking you for forgiveness. Strengthen me so that the next time these people pop off on this job, I don't play pop off back to them. 
All right. You, you can talk to God just like that. You don't need King James because he doesn't speak in King James. <laughs> All right. Just talk to him regular. And, and if you use slang, he understands your slang. Just talk to God. All right. Okay. So he wants to transform your heart so that you can function in this evil and cruel world that is full of darkness, but you are the light. Hallelujah. You are to walk in love, liberty, freedom, peace, and lightness, you know, like spring in your step. All right. Okay. You, he doesn't want you to be heavy anymore. All right. And you'll feel like, like when you begin to give all that stuff over to God, you actually feel lighter. I, I don't even know how to describe it, but you just feel lighter. Let me remind you of something else. The enemy of your soul, he's going to come back. Je and Jesus is our, our perfect example. Remember after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and then the enemy came and he was trying to taunt him and saying, well, if you do this, da, 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 da. He was trying to use the Bible and Jesus like, do you know that you're talking to the word? But what did the enemy say at the very end? Or what does the Bible say that the enemy did? He said he departed for a season. So you may get free today. All right. But remember, your enemy, he knows you. He's been studying you. So he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to let you think you're free. I'm going to just let you go with that for a minute. But give me about 15 days and I'm going to come back around that circle and I'm going to see if I can attack you again. So you have to become steadfast and know that you are free. Let me tell you, he's going to try to come bring that issue back up. But this is what you have to do. There's a verse in Micah. Uh, Micah, it's in the Old Testament, Micah chapter seven, verse 19. God said that when we bring our sins to him and we confess these things to him, he takes that stuff. He doesn't even hold on to it. The minute we give it to him, he's done with it. So he takes that sin, that issue, that confession, and he casts it into the sea and he doesn't remember it anymore. Do you not know that you can do the same thing? So as you're releasing this stuff out to God, allow yourself, say, say read Micah 7 and verse 19, was it? Verse 19. Yeah, 7 and 19. And ask, this is how I pray. I say, Father, I thank you for delivering me from this, whatever it is. And just as you take my sin and you cast it to the depth of the sea, so I ask you to take this thing out of my mind, out of my memory bank, out of my mind loops. Hallelujah. Out of my nervous system, out of my gut, out of my, out of the trauma place, out of my heart. Let nothing be in me that reminds me of what I did and this sin that I committed. Cast it into the depths of the sea so that it's not remembered anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. You go down deep because sin gets all into the body. It gets in there and it embeds itself in. So you got to pull it all out, all of the tentacles that the demons try to implant into your life. All right. Okay. So you bring it all to God and he doesn't remember it. So neither should you. So when the enemy comes, go, God doesn't even remember that anymore. I am already forgiven and you cannot bring that to me. I am forgiven. And guess what? He will flee because now he knows, you know that you have been set free for whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You have the victory. Ah, glory. Are you ready for your heart to be transformed? So all you have to do is cry out to your father and allow him spend this whole week. You don't have to, it, it, it may be some things that you've been holding on to and, and Holy Spirit is going to begin to just gently bring them back up to your remembrance. And as he brings it back up to your remembrance, give it over to him. Just dump it all out. All right. So father, we thank you for this opportunity to have come before you and to sit at your table as you poured out into us. We thank you for every soul that is listening. We thank you for the deliverance 
We thank you for the healings. We thank you for the testimony after testimony after testimony of the mind-blowing things that you are doing in the lives of your people as we come and allow you to make us again another. Father, we thank you for how you are pouring out of your spirit into us, how you're healing our heart, how you're healing our families, how you're healing our communication within our families. Hallelujah. Because we had heart issues, our communication was off. But we thank you that as we get our hearts right, our whole family will begin to walk in love and peace, and we'll see the togetherness and the unity that we so desire. And then this father, this unity will spill out into the community, into the churches, into the workspaces. Hallelujah. We thank you for going before us at our workspaces and transforming the atmosphere at our jobs. Oh, thank you, Lord God, for that coworker who's always coming up and is nagging and just antagonizing and is annoying. We thank you that you give us the ability to not even hear the annoyance. It's just a gnat flying by. We thank you for it, Father. Thank you that you're transforming us. Thank you, Lord God, that you will even be a guard on our lips, that you would cause our tongues to be closed whenever we want to respond in the wrong way. We might get ready to open up our mouth, but it won't come out. You will shut our mouths just as you did with Zachariah so that we cannot negate what you want to do in our lives. So we thank you for this, Father. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher and we are the student and we submit to your training. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Amen. Well, glory to God. It has been a pleasure being on here with you all. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Transforming Glory, at His Transforming Glory. Check out our website. I know we have something out there for you. We have journals that you can take um, your uh, write all your, your thoughts out in, guided journals, blank journal. I mean, we have so much stuff out there for you, Bible study sessions. But we thank you so much for joining with us. Make sure you share this with others. As you know, the more you share the information or what you have learned or what you've been blessed with, the more of these algorithms on all these different channels, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff, they send it out to more. If you don't comment, if you don't share it, they think people aren't interested. People are interested in the things that the world is doing, but we've got to get them interested in the things that God is doing and how he wants us to have a very fulfilling life. Hallelujah. And that doesn't mean that you can't still go to ball games and um, go to the lake and do all that stuff. You still do that, but you do it in the glory of God. All right. So we thank you. We love you. And until next time, Stay prayerful and let that fire in your life stay ablaze. We love you. Bye. Glory, Lamb of God.